Hi guys, um, Tom Hiddleston here, also known as Mr. Loki. <laughs> and um, I'm here with Ali Plum, and we're going to talk about Loki, uh, season two, and probably season one, and probably other Marvel Studios pictures, and there will be spoilers. So consider this the spoiler alarm. One. Here he Still is. Here. Still here. Yeah. The villain who lived long enough to become the hero. I see you. You see me. I see what you did there. How long has it been? 300, 400 years, the two of us? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Um, Remember I came down and I yeah. I stopped I stopped off at the wrong floor and then Yeah, and you that's what oh, he gets it. He gets it. Whatever we do. We're playing God. We are God. Best arc in the business, I think. Possibly the best hair whip in the business. Damn it! Hey, Loki's back. Yes. <laughs> Bit of a hair situation, sorry. Behind Scully Hansen in sure. The Avengers. <laughs> if you remember. Yeah, time slipping is very stressful. It is. Yeah. I'm really sad. Well done. Bravo. Congratulations. <laughs> Having those horns on at the end, I mean... I've got to ask you, is wearing the slippers a time slippers joke? <laughs> if only, if only I thought of that. It can be. Um, it is. It is. It is. It is. We, 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 uh, I talked with Christine Wilder, our costume designer, about it. And it was actually our first fitting. And we knew where we were going to get to at the end. And he's got to be in slippers. He's got to be in slippers. But it was kind of about being sort of monastic and humble. And all his previous costumes are very armoured and elaborate and kind of gold-plated and, and you know, exhibitionist or demonstrative. And this was about something more utilitarian and sort of this solitary, lonely figure at the end of time. Good. So it was almost about vulnerability in a way. And you've got to be comfortable because you're going to be sitting there for a, wee while. for a wee while. Yeah, a wee while. Yeah. I'm going to ask some silly questions now just to lighten the mood because we have been talking about the end of days. But talk to me about the fine art of Time slipping acting. It's very, it's very intense. <laughs> That's all I'll say. It's like every <laughs> Doctor Who doctor has to regenerate yes. at some point. Tag. You're it. And you had to basically yeah. do that 15, yeah. 20. Well, I'll give you a quick tutorial. <laughs> that, that's what's been happening. I, every time I did it, I had to sort of do different jerky movements of putting my body under extreme tension. And I'd do it over and over again. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So they'd roll cameras and I'd just keep doing it. And then they'd take <laughs> frames out and overlay them on top of each other. So you're sort of like a flip book or something. Okay. But they're, But it's not moving. It's like... It's me sort of going, ah, or like, in fact, my neck just cricks as I did that. <laughs> or like, or spinning in or spinning out or like, but it was, you know, I'd sort of, we'd do the scene and then we'd have to do a time slipping take. And I was like, I, this is really intense. <laughs> like, cause you're having to put your body under this enormous stress. And it always, yeah, anyway. And then you had to cap it off with a hair whip. Yes, yes. Well, you don't want to have the hair in your face and all that stuff. Oh, so. Frankly, everyone loves it. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> okay. This is jumping away for a bit. For you, for all of us, I gather was improv. Yes. I know what I want. I know what kind of God I need to be. But it wasn't written. It wasn't written. You felt no. it. I felt it. For you. For all of us. I w basically, it, I knew it was this huge moment and it was very significant kind of approaching it in the schedule. And we've been doing these loops, you know, we've been in that temporal core control room. Groundhog Day. Going over, you know, faster again, sooner, faster, earlier. And being the only variable in that company. And then suddenly that set was amazing. It was on two or three stories and you could really go down stairs into the airlock and out onto the gangway, which is really there. I mean, it was all real built I material. Love all that 50s sci-fi fallout style, yeah. road screen stuff. Yeah. Stunning. Incredible. 
And there was, we finally were there and it was like a Wednesday morning or a Thursday morning or something. And um, Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson turned to me and said, I think, I think in about 30 minutes, we're, we're downstairs and it's on you before you go out there. And Aaron very kindly said, have a think about what it is you think you might say at the end of this journey. Just go and take the time and then we'll be ready for you when you get back. And I left the stage at Pinewood Studios in Buckinghamshire, just in the west of London. It was a kind of a beautiful autumn morning. And I had this habit of like, I just went for a run around the whole lot because I was like, I just move, just move the body, get warm. Um, and I was listening to film scores and feeling the extraordinary time that I've had playing this character. And I, and I was thinking of all of the people that I've worked with along the way and going back, you know, not just in season one, all these amazing people I've met, Owen and Sophia and Kate Heron and Michael Waldron and all those actors, Wumi and Gugu and back into the MCU, thinking of that first film with Ken Branner and Chris and Anthony Hopkins and Rene Russo and then the Avengers and then Dark World and Ragnarok and this journey that I'd been on with Loki. And um, I was listening to one of the scores, I think was Patrick Doyle's score from the first Thor. I think it's actually, there's a, there's a refrain that's in some of the, I think that the track is called Can You See Jane? But actually it's the end of a moment between fathers and sons. Mm -hmm. You'll be a wise king. It's a score of a moment between Anthony Hopkins and Chris Hemsworth. There will never be a wiser king than you. Or a better father. I was thinking of them. I thought, at the end of that film, wow, like, this character, this heartbroken son and suffering brother is now here. And I remember saying, like, you know, I could have done it, Father. I could have done it for you, for all of us. I could have done it, Father. I could have done it for you, for all of us. Maybe I should say that. And I kind of felt this wave of emotion and ran back into this to the stage and found Aaron and Justin and Kevin Wright and I said guys I think I've got it and they said okay and they shut their eyes and I said here's what you should say I know what I want I know what kind of God I need to be for you for all of us and they opened their eyes and they went yes and then we did it and I felt really I, I didn't tell Owen and Sophia that I was going to say it and they were there on the other side of the camera. No. And I just, I think I, we didn't do it that many times. I think I just said it and it felt, I felt the wave of feeling of all this time that I've spent, which is a, you know, it's become like part of my purpose in a way, playing this part. And it was really touching and they were amazing as a, as a sort of pair of, pair of souls to look at at that point. It's so special. How long did you cry and how much did you cry over the course of season two? How many tears escaped you? I would say the most tears were shared, funnily enough, on that, on that big chair at the end. It was really interesting. There was a take where I couldn't help it. It all just sort of came um, tumbling out. And the next take was actually much more interesting because I sort of had the experience of having felt it. And then it was just all there in, I don't know, it's a hard thing to describe. Um, as a performer, I didn't have to reach for anything because my, I felt more open somehow. And it was there. It was there. It was yeah. there. Yeah. I'll start wrapping things up because if this is the end of Loki, I am having trouble reconciling that. <laughs> I don't believe that this is. I'm sure we'll see you again. I want to live in a world where somehow Mobius and Loki cameo in Doctor Who, that's the world I want to live in. <laughs> well... Anything's possible, right? It would be a perfect... What the... <laughs> it's about who. They did it! And in further things, it always feels like there's another possibility. But if this is the end, and we are finally having our exit interview, I want to ask you a couple of sort of 
exit interview questions. Okay. Did the role meet your expectations? More than. A thousand times over. What did you like about your work? Oh, um... <laughs> Everything. I, I loved, I loved the, the uh, chance to play this mythic figure of ancient weight and depth and throw my soul at it. I'm really grateful for that. Did you get along with your peers? I did. I mean, I did. I'm not sure Loki did. <laughs> but um, yeah, absolutely. Made some of my best friends along the way. Is there anything we could have done to prevent you from leaving? Um, I mean, you know, have a word with the Mad Titan. <laughs> um, I've got say, him on speed though. Yeah, to say, hey, look, all those plans you've got, you know. We quite like this guy. Yeah. No resurrections this time. Or like, you know, figure out how to beat he who remains at chess. Yeah, that would be handy too. Yeah. Would you ever consider working here again? Certainly. In fact, I think I still am in some way. In some way. Yeah. The hardest work of all. Would you recommend others to apply for a position working here? No question. No question. TVA is tough though. Yeah. Yeah. Key lime pie is kind of tangy. Yeah. And yeah. it's not good for the old. Yeah. Too yeah. much. You can't have too much of that. Yeah. Especially on a summer day, by the way. In the heat. In the heat. No fans. No fans. Not fun. Now, finally, did you receive frequent constructive feedback and were you recognised for your achievement? Received feedback all the time. <laughs> From family members, from co-workers, um, people from on the street, bosses, yeah, loads of feedback. Um, oh yeah, definitely. I probably recognised far too much. I didn't deserve any of it. So, you know, your bashfulness has been noted. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up by saying, we first met, I think, eleven years ago, something like that. Twenty twelve. I think it 2012. was twenty twelve. I think it was twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. I actually googled as you do, Ali Plum, Tom Hiddleston, and up popped an image that made my brain leak. And it really made me want to time slip so I could go back and change what I'm about to show you. Okay. <sighs> what is it? If you can spot me immediately, I'll be impressed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I really, really wish I could time slip. I just sort of fix a few things. I think you look, I think you look, I think you look the same. You said, I think you look three times because you didn't have a word. <laughs> it's, there's a lot more hair. <laughs> you know, you look quite surprised. <laughs> and I don't think we have had a photograph since together. Come so on. I'm going to ask you, come on, right now. Yes, we would you mind? Yes, of course. If we, if we wrap up the interview, if you could take a photograph where I don't look like I've been abducted from a tennis training camp. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.